I think so. Linda says, Maran, since I started listening to you, my inner voice has gotten so quiet. I say, I wonder what my next thought will be, and behold, nothing for a while. Hmm. Elaborate. Although it's positive, and I thank you for the kind words, and delighted to hear that you feel comfortable in your mind, and you're not <clears throat> running away with any suggestion that comes to your mind, and you're creating freedom of thoughts in your mind, whether it is transient thoughts, negative thoughts, or thoughts about the exes or the breakups or what ifs and all that, I'm delighted to hear that uh, this channel, these talks, discussions, have helped you to open up your understanding about how the psyche works and the role of thoughts. Millions and millions, if not billions, and if not Every single person on this earth, all seven billion of us, have and are constantly attacked by transient thoughts, looping thoughts. And the reason we follow it and allow it to manifest itself is not because it's something that we created. We didn't. We had no idea and we still have no idea why it shows up every time that it shows up. So it has nothing to do with you when a transient thoughts or negative thoughts or looping thoughts or an if thoughts or a question of some kind, a suggestion of kind shows up in your head. That's got nothing to do with you. This is not a thought that you instigated thinking about it to produce, create, or solve something that you wish to um, do in order to pursue your goals. It is of different caliber. It's called transient thoughts. And these thoughts, when they appear, they have nothing to do with you. They have nothing to do with the questions that it poses. Nothing to do with how good you are, how bad you are. Nothing to do with your sexuality, with your gender. Nothing to do with anything other than the fact that they have randomly appeared due to many other possible glitches and reasons and the way that the brain functions. And we have discussed that in our discussions and videos discussing negative thoughts, transient thoughts. And of course, in my book, Transient Thoughts and Me, which you can find it on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, lots of discussion on that, many chapters, we've discussed different angles of it. One thing that you have to realize and remember forever, when thoughts appear in your head, that's a job of the mind. That's why it's there. It's a thought-producing mechanism. And it is on autopilot. It has got nothing to do with you. Yes, you also can go in and use it. But it's not just exclusively for you, that ability of creating thought. It's creating thoughts all over. It's like a manufacturing plant that is going 24-7. Whether you give it something to produce or not, the machines work. And sometimes in the machines that's supposed to receive good material, good ingredients, proper pro uh, pieces, and, in, uh, and um, what is it, um, uh, equ uh, what is it? Uh, design pieces to go into the machine and be assembled and properly come out to be a product as designed while these machinery is working some garbage and shit and things like that that are not the material meant to go in there happen to find their way in there and they're also going to be put together and something going to be made out of them it's completely totally different than what was designed if it was you purposely trying to produce something Thoughts are the same. The mechanical system, the, the manufacturing plant for making thoughts, the material process as a function of brain is there. Now what gets into it also goes in there, process and comes out as a thought. And most often, about over 70,000 different thoughts that comes to our mind, they're just bullshit. 
they're just negative thoughts, attacking thoughts, fearful thoughts, things to do with your gender, questioning your sexuality, questioning every goddamn thing that is there has got nothing to do with you and you have no questions about it. But it does suggest because that's the job of the mind, manufacturing thoughts. And why? Because mind is not like parts of your body that knows where they are to find their security by the knowledge of where they're hanging. You know, the fingers hanging from the knuckles, hand from the wrist, elbow, shoulder is here, my ears are here, nose is here, teeth are here, eyes are here, my head is here, my legs are there. Everything in my body physically, I know where things are. So they find their security in the place that they know they belong to and they're hanging, they're resting their hat. But the mind doesn't have a place, doesn't have a physical place. It's all over the place. It's mixed in everything, in all other information. It's an information, it's an idea. It's, a, it's, it's, it's got no physical presence. It's non-existence. It's in words and in pictorials and thoughts. There's no physical place for it. So where does it find its security, mind? Because as an entity, of mind and body, at least two parts of our entities, mind and body, that we are here in this life experiencing it, the body at every time knows where it is. In relation to other places, knows exactly where it is. And it's in relation to its body, knows that where they are, you know. Find security in knowing where things are. But the other part, which is the mind, has no place unless you go and research where mind should where mind's home should be in the body in order to coordinate mind and body that's another story which you can find that chapter in my book me my psyche and i but in most people who don't know about meditation and so on the mind has no place or even if they know meditation they don't practice it so the mind has not learned where its place of resting would be so because it has no place of resting but it needs security, and security when there is a place for it that finds itself secure, it tries to find its security in occupation in thinking. So the mind finds its security in thoughts, in process of thoughts. So what is it going to do? It's not going to attack you with anything that its respond, its answer is clear, yes or no. For example, you see, the mind wants something that will not, you won't be able to find an answer for it, so it will continue the process. The machines keep working, so it can find its security in that process of thinking, because that's the only place it can say, ah, that's my place, I'm here, I don't have to be scattered around. It wants to be someplace, but it can't, because it's all over the place, because there's no physical presence. In existence. Therefore, what it does, it creates a question in your head, which through the question, you can't easily find the answer because there's no fucking answer. But it then in turn, it will have a continuous process of thinking, which it finds security in it. You understand? Now check this out. That's why it never attacks you with a question that is positive to you. You know, different people, different gender, different sexuality, different um, interests and whatnot. But to each particular person, regardless of what they are, one thing is negative, the other thing is positive to different people. One thing is negative to you and unwanted and disgusting, but that same thing to somebody else could be just fine. But still the mind attacks you each opposite of whatever it is that you are. In other words, let's say you will never find your mind trying to bring a suggestion to your mind, to you, something positive. That, oh, you're so smart. It gives you the idea that you're so dumb and stupid because then you got to go fight. You got to go prove to it that it's not. There's a process of thinking, process of 
conjuring, figuring it out, talking about it, debating it, because that's where it, in the process of thinking, it finds security. Have you ever been attacked by your thought about anything? Your gender, your sexuality, um, something that you like, something that you are like. Have you ever heard your thoughts as, oh, you're so handsome, oh, you're, or you're so pretty? No. You always think, oh, I, I'm not so pretty. Oh, I, I, I look ugly. Everything negative. Or if you're heterosexual, a thought can come to your mind that, oh, you're gay. Then, since you're not and you're heterosexual, then you go to fight it. You go to process. Why do you, why do you say that? This idea of combating something that is not suitable to you keeps the thinking process, which in turn, the thought that is not disciplined, transient thoughts is not disciplined, finds security, involvements, finds consumption of that energy. And because that energy is used and creates that anger to you and creates that um, uh, uncomfortable annoyance to you, and you continue that all day because there's no answer to it, because it's just a bogus accusation from your thought to you. Whatever your gender is, it will attack you with the reverse of it. And then this continues, this anger, this, this uncomfortable feeling. And because there is no answer to it, it continues for a while and you become conditioned to be angry, to be uncomfortable. So every morning that you get up, because you've been thinking about these sort of questions and other questions that the thought brings to you that is not accurate about you, could be accurate about somebody else, but that doesn't attack them with that. It attacks them with something that they're not. It never attacks you with what you're pleased with. That's why it, the transient thoughts are annoying. And because this continues, and you've been doing that all day long, you sleep angry, you get up angry, and after a while, you constantly have some feeling of something is wrong as, as soon as you open your eyes because you've been having that feeling when you sleep and that fear when you get up, oh, I gotta deal with that again. But there is nothing to find the answer. The reason that you feel this way is because you are now buying into the suggestion that a, the mind has made and you think it's your thoughts. Most thoughts, unless you instigate to solve something and produce something, create something, it's not your thoughts. It's just a thought. But because it happens in your brain, you think it's my thought. Therefore, it has credibility. Therefore, it's truth. Therefore, it's judgment. Therefore, it's it's me. I have to now figure out why. Because I'm not that. I'm not this way. I'm not that way. Whatever it is. And you try to combat it. That creates that constant discussion. So voices in your head. Debating. And that creates frustration. Tension. And eventually that becomes your conditioning. It becomes habitual. And that same Anger brings same energy, brings same energy, creates same thoughts. Considering brings about the memory of same reasons, same questions. And then again, it brings same energy and same debates. And constantly, it becomes habitual to you. And you're conditioning yourself in this way to be angry, frustrated, and never Find an answer because there's no answer. There's nothing wrong with you. You are who you are, whatever you are, and you know it, and you're comfortable, and you're great with it, but the mind's business is to create these attacks in the form of transient thoughts because it needs a place. It has no place. It's like a gypsy. It's all over the place. But in order for it to be where you are, it needs to have a focusing ability, and it's not been taught how to focus. So therefore, it finds its focus in an order. And although these sort of thinking is a continuous, repetitious thinking of this order, it's a disorder because it's an attack, it's an accusation, 
It's a fight. But it finds its order in a disorder. And through this, it creates a certain kind of a routine, a certain kind of a, a security for itself, a place for itself, a concentration area for itself. Otherwise, it's all over the place. It doesn't know how to concentrate unless you teach it, which is in my book, Me, My Psyche, and I. There's a, there's a meditation, concentration, and mind needs a home. And he talks about where in the body mind needs to be trained to be there so it won't be everywhere around and to create a transient thoughts more and more. So for you to remedy this is to have to understand, you have to understand thoughts are not facts. Thoughts have no credibility. Thoughts are simply that have no worth, have no value. Have no, you have no reason to pay attention to them. By paying attention to them, you're giving them existence. You're giving them life like the, um, what is it? Um, hollow suite in, in Star Trek, when nothing is actually having physical existence, but then it's created by the program. So, if, Things that don't exist seem to that they're existing. So by paying attention to these thoughts, you give them existence, you give them life. Because if you don't pay attention to something that is passing by you, you will not notice it and you will not have a presence to occupy your judgment or mentality or thinking or consideration. Therefore, they will not exist for you. If you're in a museum, as long as you're looking at that a Mona Lisa picture, a painting, well, it exists, but when you turn around, you can't see it. Thoughts the same. If you ignore them, knowing that they have no importance whatsoever, they will not exist. They will not come to life. They will not occupy your mind. They will not go on the voices in your head, and you will not be engaged in a debate with them. But when you actually believe them, pay attention, or the question that is posed, you take it seriously as if it's credible, and you try to refute it or reason with it or converse with it and figure out and so on and give it attention then it becomes a question and it starts living it will find a life and that is the job uh, that is a purpose of thought it doesn't exist but it wants to exist therefore it creates this havoc in you so through the process of involvement it can be mattered and it could feel that is now living existing which turns your living into non-existence of thought into useless way of spending your energy and that is what you should stay away from it by what by focusing on the presence always focus on the now the now is the only place that reality actuality and life and accuracy and truth exist now the now what you're doing the efforts that you're making Living the now is in the efforts. If you're running, that's the now. If you're not running and you ran, that's not the now. What you're standing, that's the now. All the efforts is in the now. When I'm talking, this is the now. I can change my words right now. But when I say it, utter it, it's not there anymore. Yet, we know all these things in practice in life. However, when a thought comes to our head, we think something that really doesn't exist is an idea and suggestion is a word. We suddenly believe it. We're so gullible. By what? By a mere thought. Which is not even a thought that we instigated it. But we believe it just because it showed up in the screen of our brain. And instead of understanding that we have this ability of turning any pictorial, any suggestion, any words into picture in our screen like the TV does with all the stations around the world. It has the capability of receiving all these pictorials and putting it on the screen. But it doesn't mean that our TV produced all those programs that it receives from all around the world. It just has the capability to receive it. The same thing with us. We have the capability to receive, picture, imagine, understand these frequencies, these pictures, these these ideas that is all around, these, these, um, these words and ideas and thoughts that are in the Akashic Library of the Universe. 
is floating around information in any shape or form that we heard somewhere, somehow, books, television, newspaper, news, whatever, here and there, we saw it in the street. All of that are in our library. And just because we haven't, that doesn't mean they're our thoughts. They're just there. And therefore, we have this ability of turning them into ideas, which they come in into ideas, and we see it. And then because it happens to be in the screen of our head, we think, oh, it's my head. Therefore, it has credibility. So whatever the hell shows up on it must have credibility. Not true. Your TV, you bought it, a very good quality TV from a store. It's a good quality TV, but what comes on it and shows up could be garbage. Nonsense, depending on which station it's been sent. What's the quality of the pictures? Just because your television is of good quality, a good brand, doesn't mean whatever shows on it is also has got quality or, or accuracy or truth to it. Same thing here. It's your brain, it's your head, it's the apparatus you have that it can turn things into understanding shows up in your screen but that doesn't mean just because anything shows up here it also has credibility because it's in your head and your head you love your head it's your head it's you it's got nothing to do with it it's got the ability of receiving but what is receiving is garbage bullshit nonsense about 70 80 thousand of them every day we receive we're supposed to ignore them when you ignore them you won't give them life when you don't give them life what are you focusing on on the good stuff on your life on the moment and that's where living is. And then voices in your head, you will be training your head, conditioning your head not to pay attention to whatever shows up in it. Just pass by. Like you pass by in the street, you see garbage, shit, here, this and that. You don't focus on everything. You just focus on your path. That's why you ignore and you don't even remember what was on the road because you were focused on your road because they are inconsequential to you. And all these thoughts are also inconsequential. But when you give it importance and start negotiating with it, then they become like as if they are. But they're not. They never were. They're no different than the biological process that you have. You eat something, you turn it into energy, and the refuse of it, the things that is not useful, you go out in the toilet and shed it out and then flush it. You know about that. You know how to do that. But you haven't understood that brain has the same system. It creates certain things that you instigate and you need to calculate. And lots of other things that is just there comes in. It's also a refuse of this process of material process that you use for your daily life. There's a refuse of it too. And those refuse are transient thoughts. And just like that toilet thing, the biological thing, you're also supposed to know how to shed those, out, dispose of those refuse. But you don't. Anything shows up here, so oh yeah, it must mean something. No, it doesn't just like our biological system has a way to get rid of the refuse, the brain also has refuse. And these transient thoughts are that. Don't give them any. After a while, when you learn about thoughts, don't need your attention. Their different qualities and transient thoughts needs to be disposed of, not paid attention to. Then after a while, no matter what thought shows up, you don't even notice them because you simply say, yeah, okay, yeah. That picture, that disgusting image of whatever it is, that suggestion, that idea that is not me, it's nothing to do with me, I don't pay attention to it because I know who I am and I don't need to be distracted by suggestions. And this is what the brain does. It takes suggestions and tries to see what they are because its job is to, to protect us. And by protecting, that means it take, pays attention to everything. Oh, yeah, what? i got to be alert. But in transient times, you don't need to be alert. Just let them pass by. And you focus on your road, like the fresh water in the river, and ignores the garbage on the shore banks. Just keep on going. And when you ignore it, the sounds in your head stops. The ideas are not processed anymore. And after a while, you'll be conditioned to live that way, peacefully. All right, hope that is helpful to people who have been facing with that sort of thing. And uh, we go on to, we don't go on actually, we have some tea. 